Hey YouTube, David's Tables back with another video. So I'm here at the office today and we've got a v VMware ESXi 5.1 server that apparently nobody remembers the root password to. And of course, as we've probably talked about in some of our security classes, root is the administrative user. So when you don't know the root password, you're going to run into a few issues logging in. So let's just take a look at this server here real quick. So here's our screen and we see that we hit F12 to log in. Of course we've got root is the username. I'll try and leave the password blank. Press enter. And of course it's going to give me an error message. Nobody around here seems to know the password, but the most commonly used password I'll go ahead and put in here and just see if that works. And as you can see, that one doesn't seem to work either. So what we're going to do is go ahead and actually compromise this system. Uh, and of course, as we've talked about in some of our classes, this is one of the differences between black hat and white hat hacking. Black hat, of course, you don't really have pre-approval. You don't have the authorization to get into these systems, right? This is one of these systems that we own. We have the ability to get into it. We have the authorization to crack it. So we're going to go ahead and actually bypass the normal processes to actually get into the system, reset that root password, and be able to actually use this server again. So stay tuned as we have a little bit of fun. We're getting started right now. Okay, so one of the tools that we're going to use here is what we call a boot CD or a live CD. So this one we're going to be using Hirens, which is one that Christy just happened to have here around the office. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and boot off of this one. So I'll go ahead and open up my CD-ROM, get it in there, and then we're basically just going to hit our power button. I know that's really not the right way to do it, but we have no other way to reset this system. So kind of keep an eye on it here as we boot into it. Uh, as soon as it boots up, I want to get into that boot menu to tell it to actually boot off of the CD. Uh, since this has an embedded RAID uh, card in it, we're going to have to kind of wait for a moment while it goes through and finds all the drives and everything, so this will be just a moment. Okay, so now we're entering the BIOS setup. Uh, sure, as you probably know, the BIOS is the basic input-output system here, so what I can do here is I can scroll over to where it says Boot Manager, and it will show me the list of drives that is automatically recognized. We're going to choose the embedded RAID CD slash DVD ROM and press enter. And you'll notice that it will now actually boot up into that live CD. Uh, so we're just going to come down here and tell it to use a Linux based rescue environment. Uh, this is parted magic on here. Uh, I don't really need a GUI on here. It does have the option to boot into a GUI. Uh, for what we're doing, I'm basically just using the command prompt. So we're just going to choose console here just to hopefully speed things up a little bit because it can be kind of slow. So we're going to go ahead and choose that and wait while Linux boots up here. So of course, as you can see, Linux is currently booting up. It shows us all the things that it's recognizing. It's changing the uh, screen resolution for us and now it's actually loading everything up into RAM because of course this is a live distribution it needs to copy that kernel into RAM so that that's where the uh, operating system can actually operate out of uh, as far as it's concerned it really doesn't even care that there are hard drives in this machine which we do actually have four of them as you can see here we've got four hard drives, we've got some SATA connections in there yes it looks like a jumbled mess of wires but that is totally okay so of course it keeps on booting up Okay, and we finally get to a command prompt here, so let me see if I can kind of tilt this down a little bit so you can kind of see what I'm doing here a little bit easier. So what I'm going to do first is go ahead and come into my MNT directory, and we can see that currently it has a couple of different directories there, but I need to actually mount one of the other hard drives. Now, we've already determined which hard drive it is, but I'm just going to go ahead and show you guys the list of drives that are currently here. So if I do a cat space slash etsy slash fs tab, it will show me the various drives that are here. So of course where you see that it says slash SDE1 and uh, slash SDE5 slash SDA1 or slash SDB1 and whatnot, uh, those are various different drives that we can mount here. But for our purposes we're going to be using SDE5. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and first create a mount point here. So we'll say MKDIR SDE5. And now I need to actually mount that drive onto that directory. So we'll say mount 
uh, slash dev slash SDE5 onto slash MNT slash SDE5 and press enter. So now that drive is actually available in the directory of slash MNT slash SDE5. So I can do CD slash SDE5 and then do an LS which will actually show me all the files in that directory and the password directory is actually still there from when I had uh, gone in here a few minutes ago. I'm just going to go ahead and clear that out just so that you can see where we're basically starting from scratch here. Uh, so what I'm going to do first is create a blank directory to, to work in. We'll just call this temp and helps to type in the right command I suppose, right? So mkdir space temp and then the file that I want over here is the state.tgz. So I'm going to say copy cp state.tgz. I want to copy that into my temp directory. And then I'm going to change into the temp directory. And you can see that that state.tgz file is there. Uh, so a .tgz file is a file that has been uh, both tarred and gzipped. So essentially I want to decompress it as well as uh, take all the files out. So a tar file is kind of like a zip file but without any sort of compression there. So what we're going to do here is go ahead and do tar dash uh, let's see, xvf state.tgz and actually I want to add my z in there as well so that we are decompressing it as well. And as you can see it actually had a file inside of it called local.tgz. So now I want to go ahead and extract the contents of that. So we'll say tar dash uh, xvf I know it has .tgz on it. The uh, hack that I found for this said that there's no gzip compression on it, so dash xbf is all we need. And of course the file name here is local.tgz. So when I press enter, you can see that it's going ahead and decompressing that entire file. I've got an Etsy directory that it created, so if I do an ls here, go ahead and move this to the bottom of the screen, so you can actually see the state.tgz and local tzg and the slash etsy directory that we created as well. So what I'll do here is go ahead and move into that etsy directory. So cd slash etsy, oh, not slash etsy, cd space etsy because I want the directory that's within this one, right? Move this up just a little bit. So within that etsy directory, I have a whole bunch of other files. One of those files is called shadow. A uh, shadow file, as we know on Linux, is basically where the encrypted passwords are, are stored. So what I'll do is go ahead and edit that shadow file by typing vi space shadow. And that will take me into something that looks kind of like this. So you can see here's the root user. Here's a whole bunch of characters that would be basically the encrypted password. So what I'll do here is go ahead and come over to right after this first colon. And since this is VI, I just hold down my X key, or the X character on the keyboard, to delete all those out, so that I basically just have two colons. This is basically setting the password to blank. So I'll go ahead and then use a colon, WQ, an exclamation mark, and the command down here at the bottom. This is command mode in VI. So that this will actually go ahead and write this file and quit. So you can see that I still have the same files that were in here before. So now what I need to do is basically compress this back up, put it back into its original format, put it back onto the drive, and we'll reboot. So I'm going to come into the directory, the parent directory, uh, one directory above, and we're going to say tar. But this time we actually want to do a dash cvf. So this is to compress versus to extract, so tar dash cvf. And then of course I need to tell it what file, so I want to create all this into the local.tgz file. And I want to do this with etsy slash, so I'll press enter here. And so now I've got my local.tgz file recreated. And now I need to do the same thing with that state.tgz. So I'll say tar-czvf, and of course here I want state.tgz, and then I want to use my local dot tgz file. So I'll go ahead and press enter here as well. So I now have a new state dot tgz, which if I do an ls dash al, we can see that the time and date on that has been updated to the most recent time and date. Just to show you the current time and date on the system, it is showing 2348 uh, on July 11th. So now what I need to do is basically copy the state tgz 
over to over the other one that is currently there. So what I'm going to do is say cp, and we'll say state.tgz. Just move it one directory up. So I'm just going to put in a couple of dots. It asks if I want to overwrite it. I'll put in a y for yes, and that's all I really need to do. Now I should have a blank root password. So I can go ahead and reboot the system here. Make sure that my live CD is out, and we'll wait for this to boot up back into VMware. Okay, so it is rebooting into VMware as it, as I mentioned before. It does have to recognize the RAID drives again. So this will take just a moment. So now it's giving me the VMware ESXi boot screen, loading up the various modules here. And again, this can be a, a bit of a time consuming boot compared to perhaps some simpler systems. But uh, here's loaded up into VMware ESXi. Again, you can see the version number is 5.1.0. It's got a whole bunch of different modules to load. So this is actually running on Intel Xeon E3-1230 at 3.3 gigahertz. Uh, it says we've got roughly 32 gigs of memory in here, so it's a decent little server to just sit around the office. Uh, again, this isn't a heavily used server. It's not used in a data center. Uh, it's just basically one that is running on a, a little bit more of a powerful uh, desktop system here. But uh, these things can come in handy for a variety of different things. So now we boot it up, you can see where it says press F12 to shut down and restart. So F12 basically lets me uh, access the menu where I can do certain things. Again, you know, if I try and log in with the wrong password, it doesn't really care what I enter there because there is no password. If I press F12, I can leave my password blank, and you can see that it's not giving me an incorrect password message like it was before. So now I can basically do whatever it is that I want to do, whether it's restarting or shutting down or whatever. Uh, and this also means that I can access this server uh, from one of the other machines to manage it remotely. So uh, you can actually see on the screen where it says download the tools to manage this host from. Well, of course, you need the root password for that kind of stuff, right? So if you've got physical access to an, a VMware ESXi 5.1 server and you're trying to get into it, uh, this is basically what you would do to, to be able to do that. By the way, as I was sitting here editing this, I realized I should probably throw out the disclaimer that the proper method to get into one of these systems, according to VMware, is to actually reload the system, a, a fresh installation of VMware ESXi. It is not to go in and actually hack the password file, the shadow file, like we just did. So this is the disclaimer. If you need to do this, uh, you can use this method, but uh, use this at your own risk. If you're just, uh, if you're curious about some of the different techniques that hackers and attackers can use to be able to do these types of things, to perform these types of attacks, uh, this is also one of the many ways that, uh, that people can get into these types of systems. So uh, this is why we say that physical security of your systems and of your servers is so important because if you give someone physical access to it, there's a number of different things that they can do to overcome uh, the other types of barriers that you're putting in their way. By the way, thank you ATG Learning for letting me hack into your VMware ESXi server. Uh, you can find a link to ATG down in the description below for this video. Be sure to check them out. You might be interested in some of the training that we offer. So I hope you found this video helpful. I uh, hope you've enjoyed it. So if you would, leave a comment down below and be sure to click on that subscribe button to stay tuned for more videos. But in the meantime, I hope to see you guys again soon. You guys take care.